Thank you for hanging around for class this morning. It's a little different not being on site. I appreciate your interest in studying God's Word. And this month we're having an emphasis upon prayer. We've had a prayer week with our elders leading prayers at 7.30 each morning. Don Loftus has done a tremendous job preparing materials and this year to focus our minds on the one to whom we pray. It's really a, a game changer when you think about not just the activity and not just the mechanics, but the relationship, the one to whom we pray. Well, this morning, I'd like to continue our study on prayer all through the month of September by talking about some principles of prayer. We've had several sermons and several classes. We'll have one more class next Sunday morning about prayer attitudes. But today I want to talk about principles of prayer. And as we get started, I just want you to remember that in Psalm 8 and verse 4, it says this, Who is man that thou art mindful of him, the son of man that thou visitest him? It's an amazing thing to think that the God of heaven, our creator, infinite in love, infinite in power, infinite in wisdom, will invite me into his presence and encourage me to linger there and share not only my thoughts, but my feelings and my heart. Prayer is a privilege. And I, I suppose that's one of the reasons that we are confounded when we think about how neglected prayer may be. What a resource, what a power, what a comfort. So prayer is definitely a privilege. And that's why the principles are so important. We want to know what the Bible teaches on this subject. In the book of Luke, we read in chapter 11 in verse 1. Now Jesus was praying in a certain place. And when he finished, one of his disciples, followers or learners, said to him, Lord, Teach us to pray, as John taught his disciples. Teach us to pray. And he said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone who is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation. The model prayer was in response to a request about instruction on prayer. One thing all of us sense as human beings is an inadequacy to come before the Father. So here we know it was Jesus' desire to teach the principles of prayer. And if we go through the New Testament and the Old Testament and look for what it says on this important subject it can truly bless us. So let's take just a minute to think about these things together. I suppose the place to begin is to ask this. Why should we pray? And I think the number one answer to that question is because it is commanded. In the book of Luke in chapter 18, Jesus, it says, he told them a parable to the effect that they ought always to pray and not to lose heart. That's the introduction to the parable of the persistent widow. You need to pray. You need to pray persistently. And Jesus commanded it. In fact, he reveals, you know those times in your life when you're feeling faint? Maybe, could it be that the reason is because you haven't been praying? Men ought always to pray and not to faint. Not to be inconsistent in prayer. And not to be weak because we fail to pray. That's one reason. Let me share another reason. We need to pray because we need it. If you go over to the book of Hebrews, you read in Hebrews chapter 4 and in verse 16 about the importance for meeting our human needs. It says here, let us then with confidence... Draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. I need it. I need his mercy. 
I need his grace, his favor. And so it says we need to come. You need to pray. And you need to come boldly because he wants you to come. And we come in the name of his son. We pray because it's commanded. We pray because we're not equipped to live in this world and handle every problem and solve every difficulty. We need divine wisdom and divine aid. A third reason why we need to pray is found in the book of James, chapter 5 and verse 16, where it tells us the prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. Prayer works. It not only works, it works powerfully. So we need to pray. Pray fervently. You need to pray because God knows your needs and he commanded it because you're human and you need his help because prayer works. Who do we pray to? Well, we already saw in Luke chapter 11 in the model prayer, our Father. That's who we pray to. He's not just a deity in some remote corner of the universe. He's a loving Father. And He's not only your Father, He is the Father of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And when you go to the book of Romans, in chapter 8 and verse 32, it reminds us, He who did not spare His own Son, but gave Him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? In prayer, we make supplications. We have needs. If he gave his son for you, if there's anything that you really need, would he withhold it? So remembering the one to whom we pray in keeping with our theme this year, you pray to the Father the loving Father, the Father who gave His Son, Jesus Christ, to save you. And we know that we pray through the Son. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. And in the book of Hebrews, chapter 7 and verse 25, I think we find great encouragement. It says here, Consequently, He is able to save to the uttermost those who draw near to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. Jesus saves to the uttermost. It is not that we need to look to someone else to help. He is completely sufficient, more than what is necessary. He provides. And so it says he saves us, Saves us from our sins, saves us from our problems and our troubles when we're in need. But he does this for those who draw near. We draw near to him in the waters of baptism when we become a Christian. And we draw near to him in prayer. And he's there for this purpose. At God's right hand to make intercession for you. Again, what a privilege. And we need to take advantage of this. We understand our need. We understand prayer's power. We know that it's commanded. We pray to a loving Father. We pray to a Savior who's at God's right hand, ready to intercede for us. But now let's talk about how we pray. When you think about how we pray, I think the number one thing is you pray in faith. Hebrews 11.6 tells us without faith, it's impossible to please God. If you want to please God with your prayers, you've got to pray with faith. You've got to trust that he hears, trust that he cares, trust that he's all powerful and can help you. You've got to believe that he exists and that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. If you pray with faith, you can have confidence and the God who hears. I think we not only pray with faith, but we need to pray with humility. And let's go back to the book of Luke. I want us to look in the 18th chapter as we think about the parable of the uh, Pharisee and the publican. 
Because there we see a great contrast in two attitudes in praying, one very arrogant and one very humble. It says here, beginning in verse 9, he also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves. You see, we need to begin with faith in God. Don't trust in yourself. Lean not on your own understanding. He gave this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and treated others with contempt. That's a lack of humility. And here's the parable. Two men went up into the temple to pray, one a Pharisee, the other a tax collector. The Pharisee, very respected, standing by himself, prayed, thus God, uh, thus God, I thank you that I am not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I get. That's the Pharisee's prayer. Now for the prayer of the publican. But the tax collector standing far off would not even lift up his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled but the one who humbles himself will be exalted. What a difference. Which prayer pleased God? Which prayer did God hear? The one that was humble, not the arrogant one. We need to pray in faith. We need to pray in humility. We need to pray with thankfulness. In the book of Philippians chapter 4, we read there in the sixth verse, about the importance of thankfulness. Do not be anxious about anything. You need to pray instead of worry. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. In everything, you need to make prayers and supplications with thanksgiving. That thanksgiving is a reflection of your trust. That whatever God does is going to be for the greatest good. It may not be exactly what I prayed for, but it will be in my best interest. God cares about my welfare. We need to pray because it's commanded, because we need it because it works. We need to pray to the loving Father through the intercessor, our Savior who went to the cross for us. We pray with faith that God is all-powerful and all-loving. We pray very humbly, understanding He knows better than we do and giving thanks for the gifts and the solutions that He supplies. One more thing. When do we pray? Well, in 1 Thessalonians 5, we're told in verse 17, pray without ceasing. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, because this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. What is God's will? A prayerful mindset, a prayerful attitude. It's not a last recourse. It's almost like breathing, that we just have thoughts that lead us to the throne of God. And we go there with joyful prayers. We go there with thankful prayers. But the Bible does give us some examples of specific times of pulling aside and praying. One of those is David in Psalm 55. In Psalm 55, in verse 17, we read this. Evening and morning and at noon, I utter my complaint and moan, and he hears my voice. Sometimes our hearts are broken, our hearts are heavy. I pray, not once, not twice, three times. That much at least is mentioned in Scripture. And Daniel had the same habit. When you go to the book of Daniel, and you read there in chapter 6, it tells us 
in uh, Daniel 6, verse 10, when Daniel knew that the document forbidding prayer had been signed, he went to his house where he had his windows and his upper chamber open toward Jerusalem. He got down on his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he had done previously. I don't know how many times Daniel prayed a day, but he had three very specific appointments where he put everything aside and he talked with his God. The example of Jesus is found in Luke chapter 6 and verse 12 when he went up to a high mountain and prayed before choosing his apostles. Or in Mark chapter 1 verse 35 when he got up while it was still dark in order to pray. We need a time to pray. And I know in Matthew chapter 6, it tells us that we need to be careful. We need to go into our closet to pray. That doesn't mean prayer just needs to be in times of secret. This is not a prohibition against, against public prayer. It's just saying that, that our prayers should not be exploitation. They should not be exhibition. They should not be just to impress, but to bless. Not selfish, not ostentatious. Your family table is a time to pray with others. Being around the Lord's table is a time to pray with others. So we have our secret prayers. For the longings and the burdens of our heart. For those that we love. That we have the public prayers that sustain our families and our congregations and our country. Well, I hope that you'll have more time to pray this week. I've been praying more at this point in my life than I ever have, finding more joy, more strength, more clarity. And, and I hope that you found encouragement. Old Hickory is a great place to call home because it's a praying church. And this emphasis in September every year is a reflection of Don Loftus' faith and his belief in prayer. And he's encouraged me. I hope he's encouraged you. And let's be praying for the sick. Let's be praying for those who are bereaved. Let's be praying for all the special needs that are about us. God bless you. Have a wonderful rest of the day. See you at 5 p.m. tonight online. God bless.